Hello dear doctors, this is Dr. Sherrier and we're going to give you today an overview on uh, cardiology review as you can see and uh, just on the left hand side is our tetra theory, recall, more concussion, that's how you should study all the time and there are of course the books John Murthag, Mustard the Board, you know and you know Davidson, you know you can use sometimes mainly we use uh, the John Murthag and you know it's relevant page numbers and you know of course like you know RACGP, Medscape, Medbullets, these are the reference websites. So this is Dr. Sherrier and I'm going to explain you know today about cardiology topics. So here we go. Oh hi guys like you know how it's going. I hope so everything is uh, going well for all of you and um, I hope so you can also see the board. So my uh, plan is today to give you an outline about cardiology. Our cardiology classes are based on the two parts. One of the part is based on the ECG, uh, which we have in a separate video. And another thing, the life class on the cardiology theory. So I'm going to give you the ideas from where to study, what to study, what not to study. We have to be specific, it's important. Um, so let's go and see. Now, if we talk about the cardiology, as you can see the overview in that case you know we have to use the John Murthag first of all most important thing for us so in the John Murthag 13 page numbers I'm going to tell you but before I tell like you know I'm going to tell you there's some important ch chapters in John Murthag especially you will see you know that palpitation is one of the things while studying cardiology you will also have palpitation I hope so not yeah. okay then uh, palpitation I hope so you also don't have chest pain you know while studying so the chest pain is another big chapter so everything you know included under that then there would be the rhythm related disorder the arrhythmia the rhythm the rhythm related disorders and of course the thing is coming the hypertension right and dyslipidemia okay if you ask me doctor which of them which of the chapters are most important i would say these three are more important you should give more emphasis especially on those three chapter uh, hypertension specific i will be telling you especially antihypertensive uh, choice of antihypertensive those are much important and of course hyperlipidemia just one or two question statement type of question comes you need to know the normal ranges and all these things uh, statement type of questions I'm going to tell you especially in the classes I'll tell you more things but this is you know in general that's you know some of the chapters the overview so you can go through these chapters so I'm going to tell you the page numbers of all of them especially let me claim the others and you know the thing left is palpitation you know you need to understand one thing when how where you know the palpitation thing usually started so this is something important you can see today. So in the palpitation, basically, if I talk, um, when you see an ECG, like, you know, which started with the palpitation, if we say example, like, you know, SVT, VT, ventricular fibrillation, old Parkinson's white syndrome, even, you know, a lot of type of atrial fibrillation, flutter, all, you know, is associated with palpitation. So how, you know, we are going to, you know, differentiate in between them in terms of ECG, in terms of clinical setting, that is our important thing to know actually so in case of palpitation if we see this part uh, we'll be learning certain things and so I'm going to tell you the page numbers of all those things and uh, among them you know if I just started with one palpitation chapter let me tell you palpitation chapter is given in John Murthag page number uh, 814 for seventh edition and you know those are using the sixth edition for them telling like you know 803 is the page number for them so this is you know important thing for the cardiology side okay so wonderful so these are page numbers of different book now let's start open a page that's arrhythmia in seventh edition is uh, 819 is the page number so from the arrhythmia if you open that one you know uh, you know you have to study the causes, the ECGs, the types, and also, of course, the management of all of those things. Of course, definitely, I'll be telling you all those things in the classes, what chart to use, which to use, which one not to use, okay? 
So, but I'm giving overview now actually before the class. Now, a very important thing that is coming after the arrhythmia. Uh, arrhythmia is present in 819. Now, just the opposite of the arrhythmia or the tachycardia, that's the bradycardia. The sinus bradycardia things are given in 821 page number. Just to tell you guys, we use the John Murtagh 7th edition in the classes, but we try to also tell you the John Murtagh 6th edition page numbers. All right, now, old Parkinson's white syndrome, that's also given in uh, 8323. 823. Uh, SVT is also given nearby, supraventricular tachycardia also given in the similar pages. Now, ventricular tachycardia is again given in the immediate next page, 824. Toxodus depointes is given, it's a very important thing. Uh, I would suggest to see that one from the Davidson, the Toxodus depointes is a French word. Okay, so Toxodus depointes is given in 824, but I like the Davidson one more. Um, now coming is atrial, you know, that fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation things are given in 8 two four the page number atrial flutter is given in the same page okay so these are some of the informations we have and after that like you know there's a big summary chart is given in eight two six whatever the thing you learn is given in that box so i want you to use small you know key notes side notes all these things which i'll tell you in the classes so in that chart eight two six you're going to see a lot of things including SVT, VT, heart block and a lot of other things. Heart block I'll teach you in the class separately. Only uh, studying John Murtag is not enough. I like the you know box because you know his one thing is very given very nicely is that's the what is the drug that is you know you should use first line what is the drug that you should use as a second line. So this is a nice thing is given in this box all right from the heart block side. Okay so this is the, some of the party palpitation related topic we just see you know this is a whole chapter actually in John Murtagh so palpitation and the heart block these are the things so if you just you know use the board in the palpitation what you have to see learn SVT VT ventricular fibrillation uh, Ulf Parkinson's white syndrome um, bradycardia bradycardia atrial fibrillation atrial flutter so all these things you need to learn from the palpitation chapter, including the ECG, including the features, including the managements. All right, so where's my dust here? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So after that, you know, there was a chapter that's related to, you know, your chest pain. And after, you know, this one, we will start in our class, the chest pain. I have said not feeling chest pain right now, hearing this. So MI is one of the like you know very hot topic myocardial infarction related things. So MI, let me tell you, it's given uh, in certain pages. I'm going to tell you the page numbers. Okay, so the page number of the chapter we started is um, four three nine for seventh edition user, four three two for sixth edition user. Okay, so you can open up the chapter. The chest pain so now the question is coming from chest pain you know always you should start with the differentials when you learn something with the chest pain always you start with differential remember this is for your lifetime that you know don't just jump up chest pain means always mi most of the chest pain ended up with some simple gas problem so you know that is always start with the dd always remember near to heart there's another thing pericardium so pericarditis you should remember this also started esophagus is there so esophageal things are uh, causes lungs is nearby though so the peripheral all the causes are included right so esophagus lungs cardiac yeah some idiopathic you know tasis a lot of things are there so the chest pain dd will learn and then the most mighty one is the myocardial infection so myocardial infection a lot of things you need to learn i'll teach you in the classes like MI, the causes of MI, the risk factors of MI, what are the clinical feature, you know, um, post MI complications, even more important and the management and all these things we are going to learn in the classes. Okay, so let's just find out the things. Um, causes given in 439, 7th edition page. 
uh, the causes of chest pain I will teach you in the class you know especially causes separately central chest pain peripheral chest pain if you learn in that way that's more better mm, some of the pages you will find that's related to MC clinical in the beginning of the chest pain chapter you know how to take the history how to you know those pages are related to um, a clinical mostly but no harm in reading all these things right so medical ischemia officially it started in John Murtagh 443 that's the thing my suggestion you can also you know check it from the master the board book it's another you know famous book master the board you can also see that one so um, 443 is the page number if you're sixth edition user you can also follow the same chapter you'll find it I'm telling serially all, all these things and definitely you should need to ch check some of the ECGs so MI, I'll, I'll be teaching all those important points and after that we'll come to certain things aortic dissection so aorta is also nearby as so aortic dissection aortic aneurysm if the rupture what happened so chest pain so i'll be teaching you um important dd is pulmonary embolism but uh, it's a mostly surgical topic we'll teach you in that one in surgery then thing is coming acute pericarditis that is 445 acute pericarditis uh, things to learn from pericarditis are yeah so in case of pericarditis uh, chest pain pericarditis you know it is very important you you learn the position you know position of the pa you know patient you know in case of pericarditis of course chest pain is a very common thing but position and relation with the inspiration this is a very very important thing so chest pain pericarditis position this is so important the second thing that's coming uh, pericarditis is clinical feature uh, dd of course uh, again the same chest pain related dd but do remember about the cardiac tamponade that is also interrelated somewhere re in relation with the pericarditis but that's even more emergency that cardiac tamponade so clinical feature dd and of course management has always been in that simple aspirin actually okay so pericarditis related it's given in john mutag that is 443 445 that's the page number okay so this is the pericarditis related thing even from the chest pain you need to learn again that particular thing all right so esophagus we done already in the git so esophageal i'm not getting into here now there's a very big chart uh, the good thing about the john mutag a lot of nice chart and they're increasing number of chart so uh, one of the very big chart is given in 447 page a lot of type of chest pain altogether i'll also show some other chest pain charts during the class like those are also coincides but this one is also very nice one this 447 for the seventh edition user and 441 for the sixth edition user so uh, you can go and you know check all of them especially it's given in very nice way pain site of pain radiation history associated symptoms okay then you need to see some added if there is if it's hard if there is added sound you know you should always take this auscultation finding always need to remember ecg finding of course and the investigation of choices so hard and your investigation always keep it in mind which one is first line ecg is first line or which in most cases ecg is first line okay ecg chest x-ray these are a lot of important initial tests then you know you can go for the echo troponin i and a lot of other things out there depends on the diseases a lot of thing we do um, some of the cases we can do halter monitoring and all these things right so i'll be teaching you all these thing investigations related things right so let me just check for a while and uh, your angina is given in 449 just to add here angina is given another thing in relation with the mi is given in 449 what you have to learn from angina is definition uh, why it happened uh, even if you don't need it for MC MCQ like what is the pathophysiology but you need it in MC clinic and in any ways so investigation treatment and the clinical features of the chest pain okay so these are some of the things and some post MI complications are given four five six seventh edition okay so this is important so still chest pain continues and lot of interesting managements are given in page number 457 457 interesting managements are given so you should also i'm telling this is an overview of the class this is not the full class this is just 20 minute class in main classes are three hours of course so don't get confused and after that you know there are some extra topic apart from that four chapter i told like please take note among the cardiomyopathy please learn about at least hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy 
it is given in 7th edition 172 172 7th edition 6th edition user please open 170 all right so this is about like sudden death in a young footballer uh, so that's the, this one right the next topic coming topic is hypertension okay let me write this one let's remove this chapter chest pain i'll tell more things in main class don't worry at all guys so hypertension so in case of hypertension like you know as we can see uh for the seventh edition user this is uh, 969 and sixth edition user is 955 that's the you know page numbers actually so in hypertension normal ranges of course everyone knows the normal ranges you also need to learn about if a person comes with simple hypertension what to do this is a silly question but comes in exam um, you also need to apply how to apply chat score especially in the arrhythmia chapter more significant is the you know how to apply the chat score and all this thing and of course like the causes of hypertension primary most are primary right and of course that's the secondary lot of causes so you can you need to exclude the causes the secondary causes of hypertension okay and also the white coat hypertension refractory hypertension most important thing here is antihypertensive drugs right so the most important is antihypertensive drugs now in this case if you see um, if we just proceed now in this chapter in the beginning you will find they have mentioned about cause in 970 um, after that uh, certain things so the, some of the clinical feature in the body like you know what are the features of hypertension they just highlighted in the beginning of the book um, there's like you know um, blood pressure measurement uh, you know um, you know correct size of the cuff is very very important you know I'll teach you that one in the class there was a question related to this one and also the hypertensive managements hypertensive managements like the drugs like I mean more than 55 what is the drug you should use below 55 what is the drug you should use this is very important if you have a lot of parameters like then what drug you should use so those all those things are given uh, 979 979 is the page also what are the classification of drug that is given 980 but I also do like the Davidson table I'll show you in the class that one apart from this one now we're heading towards something which is uh, hypertension and the emergency that is 983 and you know pregnancy and hypertension this is another very important thing pregnancy and hypertension i'll teach that one usually in obstetrics but uh, i'll try to highlight at least a little bit things drug of choices hypertensive emergency during the pregnancy so this is also very very important and of course uh, the next super important is that particular table here that you know um, 984 page seventh edition user the very super high yield you know in relation like, like say example asthma hypertension drug of choice i can't give beta blocker then you know a certain things like someone is having gout what should be the drug someone is pregnant what should be the drug someone has renal failure what should be the drug so that's how a lot of question tested some drug interaction things are also tested so you need to remember sixth edition user 970 seventh edition user 984 for this particular place okay so now this is the end of this chapter hypertension end of oh sorry <laughs> hypertension and uh, lastly there is hyper you know lipidemia or dyslipidemia demia you need to know the ranges i mean there's a lot of part of lipid profile right you know which one uh, i mean the normal ranges both in milligram per deal and also the millimole per liter separately in australia they use more about the millimoles so you need to remember that one so what basically you need to learn okay so please open up the chapter 87 in seventh edition I, I mean the page number is 986 986 for the seventh edition users you can please open up this one so normal ranges basically you need to learn and also some drugs which is used in dyslipidemia and what problem they causes in the body this is also very important with different drugs and also whether they have interaction with other drugs because a lot of uh, drugs that is uh, anti-lipid drug we call has interaction with a lot of other drugs so you need to remember all those things so the chapter is 986 okay dyslipidemia that's the chapter name
Okay, so you can go and check. I'll teach you. It's a nice to know chapter. I repeat, that's a nice to know chapter. It brings us to an last uh, of the, one of the chapters in uh, cardiology is the heart failure. So now in the heart failure, you, the seventh edition user, you should check it from 991. I repeat 991. It looks like emergency 911, but it's 991. And sixth edition is uh, 977. So this is the heart failure. You should do know about one thing about the heart failure, like especially heart failure especially you know those are differentiated acute and chronic so while you model the drug you should also know is acute symptom present or not present if the patient is presenting in emergency setting or whether it's a stable patient many people has a thinking oh beta blocker can't be used in heart failure it's always not a beta blocker also used in heart failure but in a stable patient you know we don't give that one in emergency setting most cases actually after settling down then you can use that one so this kind of question will talking more about how to use stratigoxin how to use the ac inhibitor what is the function of ac inhibitor what are the drug of choice you know um, in various situation along with the heart failure and some of the other treatment modality about the heart failure digoxin side effects are also very very important so in this chapter you will find the clinical feature of heart failure in the beginning must learn that one and you should know the differentiating point between the left heart failure and the right heart failure okay so this is very very important so after moving forward investigations are given 993 i repeat 993 and treatment of heart failure are started from 994 all right so these are the certain things so we'll be teaching you in the class and there's a nice box given in 996 you have to learn that one i need to explain that box to you i'm not going to explain now this is the trailer full movie is waiting don't worry okay and after that there is a thing um, infective endocarditis this is the last topic we'll be finishing the cardiology infective endocarditis is 988 that's the page number i repeat 988 i'll be teaching a lot of things for infective endocarditis and uh, 282 so sorry 288 for uh, seventh edition 282 for sixth edition user I, if i talk about the infective endocarditis there's a very famous line right uh, young male presented with fever and murmur suspected infective endocarditis until proven otherwise so infective endocarditis in these cases you know you need to learn you know what it is like pathophysiology all this pathophysiology does not test it in mc mc in that way but in when you go to mc clinical you have to explain the patient why it is happening so in that way it's not harm if you learn you know why it's happening so in fact you know what it is i'll explain in what pathophysiology it's a hard probability things and of course uh, after that the important thing to learn for mc is the clinical features whether you know they will ask you to make a diagnosis investigation especially what is TEE? We'll explain that one transesophageal echo over trans thoracic echo, and of course the treatment modality in infective, and of course also the you know the prophylactic, okay? Different uh, scenario where you know in which case uh, what you know prophylaxis you should use. Like say uh, someone is going to have a dental surgery, so in that case what antibiotic? Someone is going to have a genitourinary procedure like you know TERP TARP procedure so which one you need to use so you know this kind of things uh, questions uh, and also some recalls question banks you know will be showing in the coming up classes and just to you know leave, before I left like you know the books you need to use there's also this miscellaneous topic I'll teach, be teaching in the classes uh, RSCGP, Medscape, MedBullets uh, and this is you know the SMA Tetrad like you know the theory you need to learn uh, recall you need to learn mock you need to practice question banks you need to practice if someone just tell you just do recalls you will pass some people is true but many people is not true MC is getting more tougher if I just say theory is enough it's also not you also need to do recalls that problem people do have you know when someone is studying in Australia and uh, you know some of the centers you know they don't teach the recalls some people just teach the recalls so again the theory is lacking so I don't believe in the intermediate I need to, you know it should be knowledgeable your knowledge is something no one can take from you 
so you know be a knowledgeable person first of all and of course you should use the technique unnecessary things maybe you not learn but we have we will be specific and of course mock test you know every week you know we get we take mock test cardiology will also take mock test next week and of course question banks will also you know give you question banks okay uh, so this are all the things from today uh, from shes medical academy and will be uh, joining you shortly after cardiology there will be more chapters coming up like in renal, rheumatology, neurology is another big one is coming up. Okay, so all my best wishes to the, you guys and this time we promise to add an extra class that's uh, like on the travel medicine and some infectious disease related thing. So I'll be seeing you guys very shortly. Thank you. This is, bye -bye. This is Dr. Sherrier.